On March 8th, International Women's Day, Red Stockings of the Women's Liberation Movement has called women to the United Nations to expose and protest what we term the myth of America. Welcome everyone. Red Stockings of the Women's Liberation Movement is a radical feminist group founded in 1969 that is committed to going all the way for women's liberation. In the U.S., we now work the longest hours of any people in the industrialized nations. Boo! Boo! And women here are doing more unpaid care work than women in over 100 other nations. Boo! Boo! In many countries, women don't have to work the double day that U.S. women still do. Women in other countries have won programs that give them more time and independence from men and employers, and so can we. We're here to demand free universal quality childcare. We demand national health insurance. We demand paid parental leave for men and women, and lots of it, like the full 16 months they have in Sweden. And finally, we're here to propose a change in the strategy of the feminist movement so we can move closer to finishing the unfinished agenda of the women's liberation movement and lay the economic foundation for our freedom. You'll hear from four women today who will speak from their own experiences about the conditions we women face in this country to expose and protest how women in the U.S. don't have equal rights, equal pay, and why. It's an international scandal and a scandalous international hoax. Despite four decades of feminist movement organizing, right now in the U.S., we women don't have it all, we do it all. We work for pay all day. We clean the house and make the meals when we get home. We tuck the kids into bed. We look after older family members and wade through the mess of health insurance forms. You women out there could add to this list, couldn't you? Yes. We call upon the United Nations to stand up with us and condemn the United States government for not guaranteeing citizens, for not guaranteeing its citizens, particularly the women of America, the basic collective support we need to work, have families, and pursue happiness. We call upon the UN to condemn the U.S. government for supporting the pernicious so-called family wage system. Here in the U.S., it's up to each individual woman to cobble together some kind of ad hoc system to keep herself and her family afloat. Books, magazine articles, they tell us all how we just have to balance. Balance things to make things work. We are here to say what women already know. There is no perfect balance. And there is no individual solution. How can women in America have equal rights with men while employers still operate under the outdated assumption that the male is the breadwinner, the so-called family wage system? The family wage system started in this country long ago under the premise that employers would pay men enough money to support a wife at home taking care of the kids and the housework. While both men and women are now in the workforce, the family wage system still denies us equal pay for equal work. It burdens women with endless unpaid care work at home, and it makes it impossible for us to benefit equally with men from the satisfaction of having a family life and the economic independence of paid work outside the home. We refuse to continue to incur any limitation or penalty on the very necessary work of having children. Red Stockings is here to raise consciousness about the fact that in the rest of the industrialized world, women live quite differently than we do here. Because instead of a family wage system, they have more of what we call a national social wage system. Under a social wage system, there is national health care for everyone, health care that does not make women dependent on a job or a husband, Universal free quality child care and long term care for adults who need it. Paid parental leave for both parents. Many countries have all these programs. Other countries have some of them. In the US, our government doesn't guarantee any of them. And who takes up the slack here? We women do. We call on men to step up to the plate and stop blaming women when we fight with them to pitch in. Men should start doing their share of raising children and figuring out how to balance. 
not leaving all the worrying and problem solving up to us. Men need to step, step up and fight for these things. Fight with us. Fight in a movement and change the diapers. Hi, my name is Julie Kirshner and um, I'm here to speak about uh, the birth of my daughter five years ago. Having a child after the age of 40 was a huge change but part of the reason we waited till that age was because of problems financially that we simply couldn't ever afford it. I mean, first of all, after the birth, no paid parental leave. So for months, we had no income. But then I did get back to work part-time. And then the problem became childcare. Childcare is incredibly expensive. I mean, I have friends tell me they're paying three, four, five hundred dollars a week for childcare. So uh, then I had worked for like 20 years straight and I didn't know what to do when all of a sudden I was a stay-at-home, full-time mother. And this was not what I planned at all. And uh, okay, so I thought I'll try to get another job, but again, the lack of childcare came up, the fact that the childcare was so expensive. And um, recently, I um, was looking, you know, I was looking in a local KFC, and they offered evening hours. And I was, uh, I inquired into the job because I was thinking, well, it's evening, so when my husband comes home for work, I could then go to do this job and it would provide some kind of income. So here I am with a master's degree looking into fast food. That's the system we have right now, and I think it's a very unacceptable system, and it's about time we do something about it. Okay, my name is Phoebe, and before September 2003, I lived in South America, a developing country by the name of Guyana. And while living there, I heard the most wonderful stories of American women. There are the most liberated women in the world and have access to all the resources. In September 1993, I immigrated to the United States from Guyana to pursue the American dream like so many others. But instead, I discovered the myth of America. I recall the very first time I became ill and was unable to speak to seek medical treatment because I did not have the money. Today, I have Medicaid. But let me tell you why I have Medicaid, because I have to work below 20 hours a, below 20 hours a week. How am I supposed to work below 20 hours and live, pay my bills? Now I'm dependent on my brothers or a father or a man in my life to provide, or that is exactly what is happening to me. That is why I still live with my parents. But it's not only European or industrialized countries that guarantees these benefits, but several developing countries too. For instance, when I, where I'm originated from, Guyana, it's a developing country which is considered third world. They have 24 hours health care and paid maternal leave, parental leave, sorry, for three months. So what does that say about the U.S.? Constitution are for women in the U.S. Where do they lie? My name is Jennifer Sunderland. I am an early childhood educator and a mother of a one-year-old, Milo. <laughs> when we were planning for our baby's arrival, my partner and I agreed that even though it would be unpaid, I would take six months away from teaching to be with our son. As soon as I was not bringing in an income, however, I began to feel the power imbalance of not having my own money. My partner never held it over my head that he was providing for me, but the fact that I had no economic freedom affected me. I was very lucky to be with a great guy who didn't abuse this power imbalance, but I still felt that my choices were limited by my dependence on him. If I had some kind of guaranteed paid parental leave, I would not have felt so powerless. It made me angry when I found out that the U.S. is one of five countries out of 173 that does not offer any form of paid maternal leave. I have not been able to afford any kind of health coverage for myself since I was in my early 20s. So when I found out that I was pregnant, I went right away to register for PCAP. This is the public assistance healthcare program specifically for pregnant women that is offered here in New York City. And I would be completely covered with no hassles for my entire pregnancy, the birth, and three months after postpartum. Then I had my son. 
and I realized three months was not such a long time for what my body had just been through. <laughs> As I thought about it more, it made me angry. I was only covered while I was pregnant, and I felt like I didn't matter as an individual, that I was active, only actively in the process of having babies was I worth this sort of attention. I'm Carol Giardina. I'm a fighter for women's liberation since the 60s. I'm a 68 er I'm a substitute assistant professor of history at Queens College. I couldn't have made it through the PhD program if my 85-year-old father living in a trailer in Florida hadn't shared his social security with me. Well, I completed my PhD, and with all my national awards of distinction and publications, I had no idea how difficult it would be for me to get a full-time permanent position with benefits. But I soon found out. Well, my boyfriend helped solve part of the problem by marrying me so that I could be assured of health insurance regardless of my job situation. Now, I can't help comparing my situation to the situation of my cousin Pepina in Sicily Pepita's husband died young, and as a single mom alone, she raised two daughters who both went to college for free, because college education is free in Italy. Wow. Pepina is nearing retirement age, and she will retire on almost a full salary with free health insurance provided by Italy's government-sponsored national health insurance system. She didn't have to remarry to put her daughters through college or to get health insurance, nor is she dependent on a husband's pension. Her government-supplied pension is enough for one person to live very comfortably on. In my almost futile-sounding lifestyle, I transitioned from grateful dependence and deference to my father to grateful dependence on a husband. American women, the freest in the world? Give me a break. <laughs> what do we want? National health care. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? National health care. When do we want it? Now. We call upon our sisters around the world to stand with us in international feminist solidarity as we struggle to complete the unfinished agenda of the feminist movement for equal education, equal careers, equal breadwinning, equal parenting, equal community involvement. Together, we can advance the women's liberation agenda to a new stage. Women, are you angry? Yeah.